So on here on the desk, we've got an unlikely combo. That is a Dell stand meets a ASUS monitor. Now these two usually don't play nicely. In fact, they've never been known to show much affection for one another. But what we've got here is a possibility that I'm gonna to try today, and that is trying this free stand, which someone gave away to me because they didn't have the Dell monitor to attach it to. And I'm gonna try and stick that on to this right here, which is an ASUS monitor 19 inch which someone gave me for free as well because they had no stand for it. So I'm thinking to myself, this might work because in the past I have used silicon before and I gotta tell you guys a story about that. But first of all, let's go head down to the hardware store, grab a cheap tube of silicon, stick this thing on and then let it dry and then we'll get on to story time. So now we've got back from the hardware store and we've done two monitors in the same time and we've used the silicon to then put on the monitor stand and the back of the monitor and that's going to take a few hours to cure. I'm going to give it a few hours at least even though it says 10 minutes on the packaging since I've used quite a lot and I'm using it for full strength and that it's going to hold the monitor to the stand I'm going to give it a few hours. Now one thing about silicon you'll notice via some of the footage is that I got an alcohol wipe and cleaned down all the surfaces before I ended up applying the uh, silicon itself. And that's because you gotta get all the dirt and if there's any oil on those surfaces, you gotta get rid of that. Otherwise the silicon won't do its job properly. Now, after you've done this, you might wanna put some counterweights on the other side like I've done here. That's just to even out the balance and make sure it sticks with full strength because the base of the monitor stand is quite heavy and if that counter pulls, it'll basically undo all your hard work. And another thing is too, once you're done with the silicon tube, if you've still got a bit left like I do here, which I'm gonna use in the future, you then just stick a Usain in there and uh, make sure you don't lose your silicon. You're probably like, what's a Usain? Well, it's a Usain bolt. So now it's time to talk a little bit about story time and how strong silicon actually is. And this is from my experience in Japan when I used to use this stuff, mainly in 2016, where I was coming into a lot of things where I just didn't have the spare screws, or I didn't have the tools necessary to make things stick, and I was in a bit of a pinch. And at that same time, there was also this door in my house. And this door was just so creepy. It served no purpose. I never used it. I had numerous different other exits that I could get out if there was an emergency in my uh, studio in Japan and so what I did was I at the time I was using silicon and I cleaned down the door edges on both sides and then I silicon the whole door off and about two days later when I came back to it I was like all right let's test how strong silicon actually is and then I'm trying to open this door and I was like barging it because it was a really sturdy door it was made of that special plastic that they put in bathrooms and stuff that just doesn't break now, even if you chuck a hammer to it it's extremely difficult to break and so I'm shoulder barging this door, I'm doing like running, jumping barges at it, and it just would not budge one bit. And I was like, damn, at that point I was like, wow, this stuff is extremely strong. So if I'm shoulder charging this door, then I know for a fact these monitors aren't going anywhere with the couple of kilos of uh, weight that it's got on it for it to hold. Now, of course, before I did this experiment, I told a few friends what I was gonna do. Uh, some of them said, dude, that's not gonna hold. Silicon's not gonna do the job. And I'm like, well, let's do this video and let's find out. But at the same time, it's important to see how this stuff works. If you've bonded something via this silicon method, of course, you don't wanna be uh, using the monitor and hanging off it with 80 kilograms of body weight. But at the same time, if you do want to uh, undo what you've done, then the easiest way is to just use a box cutter and you go around it. Because once you, I guess, slice the bond, 
then it's just back to normal. So silicon, it does do very well against raw brute force, but it doesn't do well against, I guess, things like box cutters going through it, where it'll just essentially slice so easy. But that being said, one of the two monitors here, I tried uh, drilling some holes in the plastic just so I didn't have to use those counterweights that I'm using at the moment, but uh, the holes uh, were fine, but I just didn't have any spare VESA screws. And if there's one thing about VESA screws, they're always a different standard, especially to all the screws that you're gonna come into if you're PC building. So I'd have to go down the hardware store and yet again, buy some more screws if I wanted to mount it via screws. So really, I just didn't wanna throw any extra money at these budget monitors, but at the same time, I'd be drilling through plastic to make the holes line up and the plastic itself is definitely not gonna do as good as a job as the silicon bonded to the metal. Anyhow, with that out of the way, let's get back to our monitors, but also let us know in the comments too if you've had any funny experiences with silicon yourself. I love this stuff. And now we are at the finished product right here on the desk. And this monitor has its own cable management at the back too. And it's even tilt adjustable. So that's a nice little bonus where the actual monitor itself has a resolution of 1440 by 900. I don't think I've had one of these monitors ever because we can see here the resolution on uh, 16 by 9 usually is uh, 1600 by 900. So very odd resolution. If you guys have seen this resolution, then let us know what monitor it was because this one's a little ASUS 19 inch from I believe 2008. So it's definitely uh, getting on in terms of its age, but we can see from the brightness here um, compared to the rest of the room, and that's like an actual spotlight right there, that this thing is still bright. It's still got life in it. It's still a good little monitor. And that's what today's video is all about. And that is just making something out of nothing. If you come across some of these monitor stands, then don't be afraid to pick them up, especially if they're free and especially if people are giving them away, definitely take a few. Because when I see these things on parts hunts now, I'm gonna be getting these uh, monitor stands in as much as I can. Because when I get a monitor in like this, then I'm just gonna attach it via silicon. And it's just quick, easy, and it's hassle-free, and it gives a really, really strong bond. Now, if you're doing this, I would recommend leaving it for a whole day. Um, the stuff that I got, I've worked with it before. I know it cures after about eight hours, but it doesn't fully cure for a good day. So um, since it's a monitor, it's not too heavy. It's not gonna fall off or anything like that. But at the same time, do, uh, do practice safe practices if that's anything to go by. And yeah, guys, just a little tip in today's video on how you can get free out of nothing. And man, I like, this is gonna go on a combo now. So when I sell a budget combo, which budget combo PCs, trust me, they're in some real serious demand. I've got someone picking up one of these very soon late at night. So that's how hungry people are for this stuff. I can't even breathe when it comes to uh, juggling PCs at the moment. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed today's video, then you know what to do. Slap that like button for your boy, Tech Yes City, bringing you that budget whenever he can. And also if you've stayed this far and you're enjoying the content, then you know what to do. Hit that sub button, ring that bell. But also before I get on out of here, we got the question of the day, which comes from SD Rager. And they ask, can we get some serviceable, decent looking coolers from Intel? And this is about yesterday's video where we talked about uh, Intel's 10th gen upcoming desktop CPUs where I completely agree with this. That's one thing I didn't touch on in yesterday's video and it's one thing that remains to be seen is what box coolers Intel are gonna release on these CPUs because AMD have nailed it, not just with the uh, cores and threads and the IPC and the value, but they've also nailed it with their included box coolers, which do a really good job even from the budget range and then all the way up to the top where they've got those RGB bling coolers with something like the 3900X, for example. And even the 3700X gets that RGB bling wraith prism cooler. Anyhow, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. Oh.